What is going on everybody and welcome to a, another part of the Python Plays Grand Theft Auto series. Uh, in this video what I'm going to be doing is attempting to put TensorFlow's Object Detection API onto uh, this machine. So currently I am, I just upgraded uh, TensorFlow so we should be on import tensor uh, TensorFlow as TF and the current version should be 1.11 uh, release candidate 0. Now I'm a little concerned that this may or may not work very well uh, because the object detection API historically has been quite finicky uh, especially when it comes to the uh, you know, Protoc, all that stuff. So, and, and I think TensorFlow 1 after like 1.9 or something like that requires a specific version uh, protobuf and then you're going to need a specific version to work with object detection so that'll be fun all right <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started i'm going to be using a few things first of all uh, python programming.net the um the object detection api tutorial i did uh, should prove to be somewhat useful in this endeavor. And then uh, also, uh, if you just Google, um, let's do TensorFlow Object Detection API. Look for videos. This one right here from Edge Electronics. Um, <laughs> hey, idiots. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to hop to the GitHub here. And... Uh, we are going to make use of a few of the commands here as I went through. So I, I looked to see if I could find any more recent than my tutorial on doing TensorFlow's Object Detection API. And I found this one, um, and at least this one is updated to TensorFlow 1.7. Um, and then the Python path stuff apparently is not even required. Anyway, the video is for 1.5, and I noticed there are a few different commands. Also, the protoc command has changed pretty significantly, so I'm pretty sure uh, those two things are going to be a problem. Plus, in the comment section, I was seeing people were saying, like, uh, this is the wild card doesn't work anymore, which is what a weird thing to change. This, like, the, it's like sloshing around. Hopefully, y'all didn't hear that, but you probably did. Okay. So, uh, so that's what we're going to be working on. So first of all, well, the, probably the more important thing is TensorFlow Object Detection API. Let's go to the official docs here. Maybe I'll scroll. Well, I can see this really well. It's just this is probably pretty small for you guys. But anyway, uh, scrolling on down to installation. All right, because... You don't just need this install. This is the truth from the very, very beginning. It's like you, you need more than this installation to get this thing working for real. <laughs> like, I wish you could get the full installation of the TensorFlow Object Detection API using their install suggestions, <laughs> but you can't. Okay, so uh, we've already got TensorFlow GPU. I've already, well, I haven't shown you, but TF uh, version. We may end up needing to change this. Um, it's, it's a requirement for me that we are able to run TensorFlow Object Detection. So um, so I may end up downgrading this. I really don't want to write my own TensorFlow Object Detection API. I mean, there's, there's a lot of work going in, and this is actually a really great API, but um, it can just be tedious to use and set up. But uh, the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is install you know, all these little requirements here. So I'm just going to... And also, I wonder if I can... Uh, Dang it. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, properties, font. Let's go with a good old 24. Okay. Let's quit out of here. And we're going to do make sure pip is Python 3.6. It is. All right. So we need to install all of these. So Cython, context, lib, and all that. So I'm just going to run pip install. Uh, I think we should be able, we should be safe to upgrade all of these. So, Cython, con, no comma, man. Uh, context lib2, pillow, lxml, Jupyter, Jupyter, and matplotlib. Okay, so this is like their, let's see, I think they, they do differentiate usually between Windows 
in Linux, or I thought they did. I don't see it here. Cool. Thanks, guys. Um, but one of the other things we need is um, that protobuf stuff. So next thing I'm going to do is bebop on over. Oh, maybe it was me that differentiated between Windows. <laughs> anyway, yeah, they don't even bother telling you, like, hey, by the way, on Windows, you're going to have to take some extra steps. Okay, so, um, so we're going to head over to the ProTalk release page. Keras, but you'll have Keras application, which is incompatible with... The show must go on, sirs. Wait, we didn't upgrade. Hopefully that doesn't break. What? Why do you, hold on. Let me go back. <laughs> uh, where is the... Okay, well, we'll deal with that in a minute. So, first of all, it suggests that... I think we can get away with 3 plus ProTalk. Um, from what I could see in the comment section, people were just saying that you can't use the wild card, uh, which isn't a big deal. So I'm going to, because this lovely, lovely person, Edge Electronics, um, I think it was somewhere in section two, somewhere, somewhere. <laughs> it's like a really, like rather than using the wild card, he just wrote out all, <laughs> all of them. Uh, so good work, soldier. Um, we're going to make use of that. So I'm going to try to get away with 3.6. I don't even know. Let's see if this guy uh, mentions. Uh, oh, my gosh. This scroll wheel on here needs to go faster. Let me just do a pro talk. So it should be before the compile pro talks. When did he proto... Protobuf files have not been compiled. Oh, he uses Conda to install Protobuf. I don't think we can do that. Um, pip install Protobuf. Protoc. Yeah. If somebody knows how we can use Protobuf, um, I would love to know. Um, like just by like a pip install, but I don't think that's ever going to work out for you. Unless maybe we do the pathing stuff. But I don't think that's going to work. Anyway, um, so we've got the installs. Uh, that's basically the first thing that we want to do. Next thing we want to do is go ahead and clone this stuff. So I'm going to, oh, not this one, I want to clone... Oh, well, while we're here, let's grab ProTalk. We, we might have to downgrade ProTalk, but for now, I'm just going to grab it here, ProTalk 361. Uh, we might need to go with like a 3.4 or even a 3.0. The docs specifically say 3.0, but I know 3.4 works because my latest tutorial did 3.4. So um, I'm trying to decide where I want to stuff this. I think I'm going to throw it in C, though, to be honest. And where, where did it go? Here it is. So I'm going to, ooh, we actually, here, let's create a new directory. I'm going to call it ProTalk. This may or may not be a great idea, but I'm going to do it anyways. And extract all. Cool. So now, Pro, ugh, gross, why did it do that? <laughs> That's not what I wanted. Hold on. Let's open a new window. Cut. Paste. And then I'm just going to remove these. Okay, so now when we want to reference ProTalk, we just specify the path C colon slash ProTalk. Easy enough. So uh, now what we want to do is clone this entire like models directory from TensorFlow. Uh, so I'm just going to click on this main here. So models, and then it has like slash research and stuff, which was kind of a hardship for people to uh, overcome. At some point, they like added the research directory, uh, I guess for... Um, organization's sake. So go ahead and download uh, the models folder. <laughs> the shark makes some, some great noises. And I think, I think I'm just going to throw it to the desktop for now. I'm trying to decide if that's where I, really where I want it. Um, I guess I'll leave it in the desktop. So anyways, it's on the desktop. Extract all. 
Oh my gosh, please no. <laughs> Is it really going to take five minutes to extract this? <laughs> uh, gross, man. Dang it. <laughs> oh, we should have been doing this while we were doing other stuff. Dang it. Okay, so let's see. What else could we do while we wait on the... Oh, okay, I think it's going to speed up for us. So I guess you know, we just need to wait. So I'm, I guess I'll pause now, and then uh, we can continue on when this is, when this is done. Although all, you guys are all going to have to sit through it anyway, so I don't know. Maybe you guys can extract faster than me. This feels like it's like super, super slow. Um, so once we have this all extracted, the next thing we're going to do is use the protocol buffer to compile all these things. So going over to Edge Electronics, I'll try to remember to put a link in the description, but if I forget, which I probably might, um, just Google TensorFlow Object Detection API. You should find this, uh, you should recognize this photo. <laughs> this card on his head. Uh, anyway, um, and then you should find your way to this GitHub. At least that's what I'm using for now. We'll see if this works, and I'm sure we'll have to change some stuff, although it looks like maybe he's been updating it over time, which is nice. Uh, so let's see. Models, where did it go? Here. Ooh, it's hard to see that on this desktop. Okay, so models, master, and then this is it. So the first thing we'll do is we are gonna rename this just to models. It's kind of silly to be models, master, and then this, um, uh, I guess I'll leave that. For some reason, this extracts differently than I think my home computer does. Like, normally if I extracted Models Master, it would extract just the contents and not start with this original directory. Anyway, so uh, the next thing we want to do is go down to, I think for him, it was like step 2F. Right. And I think the next thing we want to do here is... Um, run these this this protoc command again i'm not really sure i guess he could do it because of anaconda so if you have anaconda you could just do the conda install protobuf but this whole thing needs to be run so the first thing we're going to do is just copy then i'm going to hit copy i'm going to open up like a notepad or something because this needs to not be protoc it needs to be c colon slash protoc that should work. And then Python out, and then all of these things. And he's running this from object detection, so object detection needs to be, so research, and then he's running object detection, so, right. So hopefully from here we should be able to get away with this. So let's open up a command prompt. Really? Pretty sure, oh, mm, do I need to, Put some quotes around this, maybe. Oh, you know what? I'm doing it wrong. Um, so it should be protoc, and then it's probably in bin, and then protoc. So c colon slash protoc bin protoc protoc copy. Woo! Okay, so we got all those. Great. Now, the next thing, um, I'm actually not sure. I don't think in the past that was required, the build and install. Um, I don't think it is because we're running from the directory. Maybe if we wanted to use it outside of the models. Let's, let's find out. So research, uh, let's go down to object detection. Hello, hello, there we are. Um, and we should be, no, I did not click that. Stop it. <laughs> um, let's see what else he's doing here. I think cause he's also doing like the creation of your automatic, uh, like creating your own object detection. I don't think we're going to need to do that. I just want to at least here, get to the point of running the, the actual thing. Let's see. Okay. So we got the Jupyter notebook here. So if I do this Jupyter notebook. Let's see if this thing pops up well or not. Cool. Okay, so then we're gonna open up the object detection tutorial. And here is where we probably fail. This will be the first failure point. 
Yes. Invalid version number. <laughs> Come on, guys. Come on. Do why do we gotta do this? Let's see. Okay, 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 here. I didn't even read those lines. So it really wants us to use 1.9. Really? Let's try again. So it sounds like we probably made it to that point. Woo, we did. <laughs> Sometimes like in the actual code, like the source code, they'll have one of these like strict version checks. And uh, that's super annoying because then you gotta find it. I didn't even realize it's like <laughs> right there. Cool. Okay, matplotlib in line, that's fine, whatever. Okay, this will be the next failure point. Uh, no. Oh, wait. Hold on, everybody. This... Um... I think we're just going to continue along. <laughs> that looks really ugly. But, uh... I probably should just run all at this point. Uh, okay, it looks like uh, we might make it through. But we might have this. <laughs> That's some. That was an ugly thing. But I, what threw me off is right at the end. It just. It's like more of like a warning than anything else. So hey, whatever. Dun 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 dun. dun. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Please work. If this works, I'm gonna be so ecstatic. This was uh, not. A yes. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Whew. Okay, so I am going to stick with my original guesstimate that the build and install uh, is only going to be required if you wanted to run this outside of that models directory. Um, in the past, I couldn't figure out how to get that to work. I could only run it from within the whole like models thing. So I'm kind of curious at this point um, to check that. So I'm just going to check that. But first, a quick shout out to my most recent sponsors. Uh, actually, members. I keep calling them sponsors. YouTube just really should never have uh, released it because now I'm going to always call them sponsors and never members. And hopefully, eventually, they'll give us a way to customize the name. Anyways, uh, thank you to Bawani Singh. Bawani, I think. I don't know. Correct me. Allendel, Allendel Valencia, Mr. Jean Jeans. These names are killing me. I can't do it. Guyandro. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. And Art Nicewick. Guyandro. Guyandro. Giandro. Not sure. Anyways, thank you guys very, very much for your support. Uh, it helps me continue doing stuff like this. And I love my job, so thanks a lot. And, uh, okay. So, let me remember to <laughs> remove these and not leave them up. And, um... Okay, so what I want to do now is attempt attempt to run this outside of here. So, um, no, yeah, I've changed my mind because I've got to move in, like, grab screen. I've got to move in um, some other things. So it might actually be best for me to see installing the object that, you know, with the setup.py the like build and install stuff to see if I can actually run that uh, elsewhere. So I am actually going to cut it here. <laughs> so I will see you guys in the next video where we run it in game and see how that's working and maybe try a few of the different models and, and go with whatever we think is best. So that's it for now. Um, I will see you guys in the next video.